Hello there and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. In today's video, I will show you how to use Luminar Neo to create a popular Barbie inspired look. The look that is known for its warmth, saturation and pink hues and it's been recently made famous in the latest Hollywood movie. We will start by creating the look and then I'll show you how to save it as a preset so you can use it on your images in the future. So as you can see, we are already in Luminar Neo in the catalog module and we are starting by looking at our sample files. Now, if you want to follow me along, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample files so you can do the edit on your own computer. Once you have the images ready, let's select the image with the lady in a pink dress and we can continue. Now, before we're going to start the edit, let's just quickly jump into the presets where I want to show you our Barbie look collection. If you want to skip the hard work and get 10 full Barbie look presets, all you need to do is to get our Luminar Neo Essential Preset Bundle. It now includes the Barbie look collection on the top of other 40 preset collections. It includes over 400 professionally crafted presets designed to transform your images in Luminar Neo. To get the best possible price of this bundle, just follow the link in the description of this video. Or to find out more about it, head to our website cleverphotographer.com. However, today I want to show you how to create the effect on your own. So let's go into the edit module and you can do that by hitting E on your keyboard or click on the edit on the top of your screen. Here in the edit module, as always, we're going to start in the develop tool. So let's click on the develop tool on our main toolbar. And the first place we're going to go into is the optics. Here, make sure that you click on the auto def range and then you can close it. After that, we're going to open the noise reduction and sharpness. Now we're going to just set standard values here as we want to set this as a preset. So we want it to apply to as many pictures as possible. So for this, let's go into noise reduction and increase the luminosity slider to 10. Once we're done with that, we can close it and then move into the sharpness. Once again, the standard sharpness is usually around 40. So let's just add 40 here and then in masking, let's increase it to 70. By applying additional masking, we're just making sure that we are sharpening only the areas with the edges, details and texture. Once we're done with the sharpness tab, you can close it and we're going to move to the top of our tool where we're going to open the light and black and whites. Starting from the light, we want a little bit of additional exposure. However, not too much, somewhere around maybe just 0.10. After that, we're going to move to the contrast. Now we are looking for lots of contrast here. We want to contrast between the light and dark, and we also want to contrast between the colors. So let's really push the contrast somewhere around maybe 70 or 60. I think 70 is looking quite good. So let's go for that. After that, we're going to move into our highlights and shadows. We are actually going to leave the highlights the way they are and we are just going to open the shadows. I think somewhere around 50 should give us a good result. You want to keep an eye in the shadows. You really want to open them and have the whole image again really nice and bright. After this, we're going to move into our blacks and whites. With the blacks, similarly to the shadows, we actually want to make them brighter. So normally we go with our blacks down. However, in this case, we're going to go up and we're going to go quite high again, somewhere around 50. Once we're done with blacks, we can move on our whites and also we're going to increase them to somewhere around 10. So as you can see, after applying these sliders, we got a really bright look, which is the first part of the Barbie look. Let's have a look at the before and after and we are getting that really cinematic bright glow. Now to finish with the develop tool, we're going to jump into the color tab and we can close the blacks and whites and light. And in the color tab, we're going to add the pink. For this, we're going to go into the tint 
And in the tint, we're going to take the slider and bring it up. Let's have a look what's going to work well. Usually we don't want to overdo it. So let's go ahead and add somewhere around 20 or 25, whatever works better on your image. Additionally, let's just bring the temperature down a little bit. So for that, we're going to go into the temperature. Nothing crazy, just somewhere around minus two or minus one. Nothing to do with the rest of the sliders here. So we can close it and we can close the develop tool to apply to the image. If you need to go back to any of the edits, you can always click on the edits tab on the top of your toolbar. However, for now we are finished with the develop tool. So let's go back into the tools and continue. After this, we're going to get the help from our AI tool and specifically the enhance AI. So let's click on it to open it and we're going to use the accent AI. The advantage of using the AI tools is that they're going to adjust to specific images. So this is why we're going to use the accent AI slider and we're going to also push it quite high to somewhere around 30. Again, let's have a look at the before and after, and you can see how it just makes everything look better. It brings some of the contrast, some of the shadows, and it just sort the image. So accent AI on 30. Let's close the accent AI and we're going to continue into the structure AI. As we are creating that really cinematic look, this is where we're going to use the structure AI to really recreate that kind of HDR cinematic look. So we're going to take the amount slider here and we're going to push it all the way to 40. Now, the advantage of using the structure AI is that the tool is human aware. Although the structure, clarity and texture is applied to the entire image, it avoids the human subjects. So it works really well on image like this. So again, structure AI on 40. Let's close it and again continue. After this, we can move into the creative section. Here, we're going to start by going into the mystical where we're going to add a little bit of that cinematic glow. Nothing crazy. All we're going to do here, we're going to use the amount slider and increase it to somewhere between 15 or 20. Maybe 20 is a little bit too much. So let's go for 15. And again, double check the before and after. Actually, the difference is quite subtle, but it builds the overall image. After this, let's close the mystical tool and continue. The next tool we're going to be using is toning. This is a tool that is often used in cinematography and in big movies. And for us, it's going to work really well as we're going to be adding a little bit of warmth into the highlights and additional pink into the shadows. Now, if you never use the toning or if you want to learn more about it, we have a full tutorial on that available on our YouTube channel and I will make sure that I will add the link to this video into the corner of your screen now. Now let's continue. And first thing we're going to do is increase the amount to 100. After that, we're going to add some pink into the shadows. So let's go ahead and click on the shadows tab. And I always like to take the saturation slider and bring it up. Now I know that this is too strong. However, this will allow us to take the hue slider and find the right color. So we're going to bring it up and somewhere around here, we want to find the right spot between purple and pink. So I think maybe somewhere around, let's go even higher, maybe somewhere around 300 is looking good. Of course that this is too strong. So let's take the saturation slider down and let's see, maybe just somewhere around 20 or 30 to start. Now we can move into the highlights where we're going to just add a little bit of warmth orange into the skin tones and into the highlights of the image. Again, coming back to the initial idea, we are building a look that is warm, saturated and has a pink hues. So we have taken care of the pink hues in our shadows. We have taken care of the saturation with our contrast. And now we're going to add additional warmth with our highlights. So let's again increase the saturation slider, then take our hue slider and adjust it somewhere around here. I think maybe around 15 should be good. Now let's bring it down and see how it's going to look. So somewhere around 30 maybe is quite good. At this point, I like to check the 
before and after. And I think the warmth is maybe a little bit too strong. So let's bring the saturation down. And even the pink in the shadows looks a little bit too strong too. So let's bring it down as well. So let's just double check again the before and after. And you can see that the effect of the toning is quite strong. However, it just adds to the overall look. So let's double check the values. Shadows, we are on 20 with our saturation and 308 on our hue. And highlights, we are on 23 with our saturation. So let's put it to 20 and 15 on our hue. Our amount is on 100. And once we finish, we can close the toning and continue. To finish the effect, we're going to go all the way to the bottom of our editing toolbar, where we're going to open the Super Contrast tool. Here, we can adjust the contrast separately for highlights, midtones, and shadows. So let's go ahead and start by increasing the midtones a little bit, which traditionally has an impact or effect on a skin tones. So just a little bit, somewhere around 10 looks quite well. After that, we're going to also adjust contrast for highlights. Keep an eye on the image. It actually adds a little bit. Again, I would just go somewhere around 10. Once we finish with the super contrast, we can close it too. And now, since we're building a Barbie look, which will probably be used on portrait images, it's a good idea to add some portrait tools into the preset. So let's go ahead and go into the portrait section and open the face AI. Here, we're going to add a little bit of face light. And then we're going to open our eyes and mouth section. Starting with the eyes, we're going to add a little bit of eye whitening. So let's go to 15. We're going to also add a little bit of eye enhancer. So let's go to 30. We're not going to worry about the red eye removal, but we can apply a little bit of dark circle removal just somewhere around 15 too. And after that, we can add a little bit of improved eyebrows slider as well. Usually it makes them a little bit darker. So let's go for 20. Finally, when we move into the mouth section, the Barbie look is well known for the red lips. So we can add a little bit of lips redness just somewhere around maybe 10, and we can add a little bit of lip saturation, again, somewhere around 10. So this is it with our face AI. So we can close the tool and move into the skin AI. Again, talking about the cinematic look, we're going to apply a little bit of the amount slider to make the skin a little bit smoother. And I really like to use the shine removal slider as it helps with any imperfections created with lighting. Once we're done here, we're going to close the skin AI and we are finished. So all we need to do now is to save this look as our preset. But before we're going to do that, let's have a look at the before and after. And I think that we really managed to create that iconic Barbie look. So now let's go ahead and click on the actions and select the save as preset you will be automatically moved back to the presets module and into your My Presets folder. Here you can change the name of the preset, so you can call it Barbie. And once you're happy, you just hit Enter. After this, we can go back into the Catalog module and let's select the second image in our sample files, move them into the presets, and here let's apply the preset we just created. Once we apply it, you can see that it's a little bit too strong. So to adjust it, just use the slider and bring it down until you like the result. So let's have a look, maybe somewhere around 70. And I think that's much better. Additionally, we can, of course, take the image and move it again into Edit Module, where we can go into the Edit tab and adjust any of the edits here. So for example, if you think that there is too much pink, in the shadows, you can go back into the toning tool, then go into the shadows and just take the saturation and bring it down. After that, you can just click back on the skin AI, go back into the tools and continue from here. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, 
there's nothing easier than heading to our website cloudofphotographer.com slash Luminar Gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.